So I'm here with Luke Humphreys, who's pretty much burst onto the scene with a quarter-final finish in the 2019 PDC World Championship. We'll get to that, but where did darts start for you originally? Well, it first started at, um, when I was about 12, you know. Um, my mum and dad used to play, um, and they used to have a dartboard in a spare bedroom. So well, I had uh, quite a few siblings, actually. I had four, and then as they started moving out, you know, we, we had a dart room. And uh, I just started picking up darts and, and sort of throwing them, you know, and... Uh, I sort of had a good youth career from the ages of 13 to, to 18, you know, playing um, youth so you, so you got straight into competitive darts? Yeah, I mean, I won my first singles title in the, in the Newbury League at the age of 13. You know, which So was, what was that, an open event? Yeah, it was like a, you know, like a pub league. Yeah. Um, and they have a singles, a doubles, a triples, that sort of thing. Well, I won the singles in my first ever year. Who did you play in the finals? Uh, I, do you know, I can't remember, um, but it, I think it was in like a B division, not an A division, but it was in a lower division, but um, for a 13 year old. To, Still incredible. But yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, I was, I'd yeah. really been playing darts for years, you know, and to go on and do that, you know, that's when I first sort of, a lot of people sort of gave me a little bit of attention. They said, I mean, that's not usually young, young kids this age, at, in them days, you know, 10 years ago, could play darts that well. And yeah, 10 years ago, we didn't have things like the JDC, the, the, the youth darts, which has come on a lot. And um, do you remember what darts you were using back then? Oh, uh, I think I was using uh, some Phil Taylor darts actually oh, in, wow. in them days. Yeah, and um, I think they were the sort of the phase two ones he ever used, um, and pretty much used them for till I was eighteen. Oh, yeah. right. So your mum and dad both had pub level or any further than that themselves? My dad played county. Uh, he was. Oh, a good, so he was good standing. Yeah, he yeah. was a good player. Um, good super league player. Probably one of the best around the area in the pub leagues. You know, uh, really solid. Um, never really sort of made any huge impressions, but he was a really solid player and a good county player. And what age were you when you flipped between never beating him to always beating him? I think I was about 17, 18, maybe, maybe a bit younger. And um, he used to always beat me on the, he used to always beat me on the practice board. And um, when I started beating him, you know, it was a little bit of a self-achievement myself. I'm thinking... So well, he was always a target yeah, to beat then? Yeah, because yeah? That's my, that was my target to look up to, you know, I think. Playing him all the time, he was beating me, then soon, all of a sudden I was beating him. So then I started to get better, and, and that's when I got into county myself at the age of 16, and, and started progressing that way. And did you enjoy your county days? Yeah, I mean, they were, they're, the, they're the sort of uh, the starter, innit? You know, every young kid or anybody starts their career off in, in a county state. And it's an honour. Yeah, it is. I mean, county level is, is an honour, yeah. a good 25, 30 sort of caps in my career in county, and I've enjoyed every one of them, you know. It's what a, was your record like? Um, I was pretty decent, you know. I think I'd probably... Won about 60 65 percent of my games. That's good, that so, is yeah, very and, good. Yeah. And probably about 2000 I've been in the A. So, um, yeah, I've got a good, good, good record in, in, in county and enjoyed your time there. Yeah. So, so moving on past county, where did you go then? Well, then it's sort of I started doing a bit of um local competitions, but like more and more serious ones, um, sort of around the Southampton and and uh Andover sort of area. Um, and, and there's a good standard of yeah, players. Yeah, I mean, we've yeah. got good players. We've got people like some Whitlock, um, Aaron Monk, Richard North. You know, really good, good, solid players. But it's always work. been a strong. It's always been a strong sort of county amateur scene, and the opens always very yeah, strong. I mean, as well, it was they? still. It was a more different feel than it was the county. You know, it's a much tougher to yeah. win one. And uh, I think I won my first one when I was about eighteen or nineteen. Um, and that that was actually the first time that I started to really believe that I could sort of make it in this game and, and maybe even get my, get be a professional, which I didn't. I am now. So where was your path to professional as you are now? Did you what happened after county? Did you stay BDO ranked or did you move on to the challenge? I actually did give up when I was um, sixty. Well, just after maybe seventeen for eighteen months. You know, I sort of uh, enjoyed a bit of my my youth. I, I sort of fell out of love with the game actually. Uh, but is that because it had been so intense before? Yeah, maybe. Or? I mean, I think a lot of thought pressure was put on my back to sort of progress at such an early age, you know. And, and we all know that you need your time to develop. And I think that I sort of went up the sort of the rise, and then all of a sudden, it nothing was really happening. For the so next you kind time. of hit a ceiling. Yeah, for a while, and, and, yeah. and I wasn't really getting much better. <laughs> but um, and, and I had the eighteen month break, you know, and I come back when I was about just before nineteen, and. Um, I think so were you then in education or did you go on to work then? I was working as a roofer then, actually, yeah, for the same company, Malone Roofing, who sponsored me. Oh, that's great. So yeah. they stuck with yeah, you. And yeah, they supported me really well, actually, you know, and I'm really appreciative of it. Obviously, now this is full time for me and they've been very supportive about that as well. As well. So, um, yeah, they're, they're great now. So having now worked full time as a roofer, um, that's a hard job. Quite a lot of the time, the weather's adverse, you've got a lot of lifting. So when you came back, did you feel that then darts, you enjoyed your darts more when you were playing 
Yeah, I mean, when I come back, you know, it was it wasn't no pressure on me. You know, I'd not been in the game for eighteen months, and uh, I'd just come back playing uh, and enjoying it and playing Super League. And then um, obviously that's when it started getting serious. You know, I started playing county again, and then I started um, back on the, the development tour for which I haven't played on for the last four years. And what, your time on the development tour was that two years you were on the development tour? Um, I, th I think this is my was it my fourth year now? I think actually since I've been back playing. Um, and, the, and in the first year, you know, I had a steady sort of start to, to, to coming back to proper, pro, like not professional darts, but sort of high t intensity darts. Um, and I, I got to a final of one uh, when I was only about 20, you know, so that was the first stepping stone for me. You know, getting and to give a you a taste for... Yeah, because in them days, there were so many good players, but it was so hard to get to a final. Yeah, so, so, so that's when you started to get that belief and think, well, I can go to the next step. Yeah, definitely. And then fast forward, you joined us around that sort of time, yeah. Um, and you've been with us since. You've now come fast forward where you've burst onto the scene of the World Championships. And so where has the change come from a keen amateur who had talent to all of a sudden saying, right, now I've got the belief that I want to take this in a career. For I think the, the, the five development or title wins, actually, which was about two years ago sort of thing, then five win, just gave me that self-belief, you know, I think... If you ask any big professional in the world, you know, a, a Michael Van Gogh, and he'll tell you winning tournaments uh, breeds belief and, and so forth. And a habit. Yeah. It does, not it? And, it, yeah, and an getting to a winning habit. Yeah. Um, and I think then winning them sort of titles really sort of made me the player I am today. And, and so they do hold you in good stead when you're under pressure, definitely. when you need to take a step back and, and, and hit something under pressure. You yeah, and I, and I was doing that the whole year, you know, and, and winning that development uh, sort of tour title, the whole thing. That was the, the the real big thing for me when I thought, you know, I got my tour card from it and I thought, the way I played this year, I know I could hold my own uh, with the big big guys. So so in your terms of the preparation for when you've won five titles, what does your practice routine look like? It was getting a lot more busier, you know, I was practicing a lot more. Um, I sort of used to practice an hour a day. but then I Was that sporadic or was that yeah, set? It, or was it, it, it wasn't really set, you know, it was just one of them things where... I would try and fit in an hour of the day after work, really, you know, before yeah. you get tired, because I used to get up at six in the morning, get home at five at night, and if I didn't go have an hour on the board straight away, you know, I'd be too tired to even bother. So would you work with specific routines, or would you just go with whatever you felt you needed to? Yeah, I mean, just try, Just it didn't matter how it happened, just get that hour in, which is important for people. I think if people want to progress, I could get a lot of uh, people message me on, on social medias and say, how, how, how do you get better? And it's hard to tell someone how to get better, but practice is the key. The more you practice, the better you'll get. Yeah, especially if you focus on the areas that you know you need to work on. So at that time then, you're practicing, your development tour, your full-time work, um, and when did that time come to say, well, now's the time to go full-time as a dark player? Um, I think it was, I think the actual, I remember the date, it was the UK Open, not this year, but last year. It was, it was my, I, on the first day, it was my last day at work, and it was never planned. Um, but I just sort of, Finished that day and, and I went off to the UK and I played okay, you know, I had some good results. And, and I thought, you know, I think I can get better at this game if I put more dedication into it. And, and that's what I did and I, I did get better, you know. I think the more you dedicate yourself to a sport, um, the more better you can get it. And I was very lucky to still be living at home, you know. I didn't have no bills to pay, didn't have no responsibilities. Yeah, so you could take, you could take so, a bit so of a risk. It was risk a risk in a way, but yeah. it, like you say, it wasn't a gamble, so... It, I'm, I'm really chuffed that I did it and um, it, it sort of paid off for me in a way, yeah. Yeah, and you, you attracted a management company, a brand sponsor, all that's happened very quickly. Um, clearly, you've got massive respect on tour for the people who know your game and who don't. Um, your throw is clearly technically fantastic. So we've got a dart here. If you if you could show us, let's, how do you go about holding the dart and talk us through what your, what you're, not so much your thought process is, but when you're in flow, how it feels to you when you're on. I mean, I'll start from, I'll get, get from the start, you know, obviously I used to throw with the Phil Taylor darts, but then I changed to a Simon Whitlock dart. Um, and that, that, was the, that, was, that was the 2014 version, wasn't it? Yeah, the one in the, in the final when you played Phil Taylor. Um, and I sort of started throwing that two and a half years ago, so, and it, it gives me a lot of success with that dart, actually, because it was the dart that sort of made me start playing better. Since I changed, so was that quite a quick? Did that happen quite quickly? It did. As soon as I changed that dart, you know, it was. So how did you? How did you all of a sudden come by this dart by luck? Or? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd had to set in my in my drawer, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, I just started throwing with them, and they seemed to really keep going in the triple twenty like a lot, and I was thinking, 
Oh, I like these. Oh, I like these, yeah. yeah. I just kept throwing them and they worked. And two weeks later, you know, I was winning two development tour titles in a weekend. Oh, with the new darts? Yeah, with these new darts. Okay, let's take a little back step because yeah. you are the only person on the planet that plays extra long shafts. So yeah. I know you say you're not, but I think you are. Yeah, so, Yeah, so what, what is it with the extra long shaft? Um, I don't know, actually. You know, my always thinking when I was younger was the longer the, longer the dart, the quicker it gets to the board. But that, that was my way of thinking at the start. Yeah. Um, but you've always had a short style barrel. Yeah, I've always had a short style. I mean, if I, was, I had a long barrel, if this barrel was sort of like up here, it would be a bit too long. You know, it's hard to control once you throw yeah. the dart and it kicks up because my darts sort of sit up. Oh, so you like to arc them yeah, in? Yeah, I like to arc them in. And if I was throwing long darts, you know, they they, they, they tend to go over a little bit. So is that is the way you arc, is that how you see the dart in the air? Yeah, yeah. And it's important to get the right balance for me. You know, I think. I've tried longer barrels and, and short stems and it, it doesn't feel the same. So it's, for you, it's the shorter barrel, longer stem, and standard shape flight that you, that's working best yeah, for I you. Mean, I don't know what it is about the dynamics, but I like the sort of the front weighted part of the dart, you know, and as, as it goes through the air, it seems to sort of rise up and then come down at the last minute, and it seems to sit lovely, you know. So, not, that, not so when you're, if you're visualizing, say, treble 20 to fill it up, so you're seeing the dart stacked up yeah. before you even throw I them. I mean, I always have that vision. Just as just I'm about to throw, you know, I always have that vision of get that first dart in there perfect, just above the wire, just inside the triple 20. And as soon as it's looking at me like that, you've got a huge target with a long stem on here. We have a huge target to sort of address down to, you know. If smaller the dart, the harder it is to sort of crush it into. Yeah. To get the, the so you're, you are physically looking for that first dart in, bang the yeah. next one into. Yeah, I mean and that's what sort of helps me. When once I get the first dart in, I think a lot of people will tell you this um and on T V as well, when my first dart goes in, I tend to follow it a lot. It's because once that first dart's in there, you've got such a big target yeah. Catch that flight, it's, not, it's got you know, nowhere else but the triple 20. So what happens if you don't get your first dart in? What's, what's well, plan B? It, it can be challenging, you know, but um, my triple 19s are usually very decent as well. So, so you, you enjoy the switch? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I enjoy all the... I, 20s, 20s, 19s, 80s, 70s, I, I don't have a weak one. You know, I don't feel like I do. You know, There's not one I yeah. think I want to avoid that segment. No, because so you always seem to get into a good flow no matter yeah. what you're playing. So, yeah. that, so for you, you don't have a weakness around the board? No, not really. You know, I think that... The way my dart's going as well, look, I've learned to be able to go below the wire and caress it into, so say that's, that's the wire there and we're below it, to caress the dart into it and then bring it up so it still goes in the triple 20. So that one could be just under the wire. So do you find, but, that, do you find that instinctive or conscious? Um, I think I find it instinctive, I know, because I know I can do it now. I mean, it's, it's something that I've learned to do. If it was below the triple, because my dart was so long, it used to be straight down because you can't get past it. Yeah. But I've worked out a way I've sort of tweak throws and stuff to be able to sort of... So that's something you've worked out over yeah, time? Yeah, something I've worked on, you know, and, and it's probably made me a better player being able to sort of stay, stay just below the bottom wire and still be able to find a triple 20 from there. Yeah, and set up some bigger scores. Yeah. So let's see how you hold the dart then, so, so people can see how... So a, usually I've got like a, uh, we have a we re, re sort of have a nailed sort of ring in here, um, and my finger just goes... And, and what the nerve is to feel yeah, in the finger? Because um, I think it's very important that you know what I mean? You're always in the same position. You know, when you hold your hand, it's always the same. I mean, sometimes I've gone up here, then down here. But with these sort of rings, it feels like you're always in the same position. Which is important. Which is important. Yeah, you know? important and I yeah. like the sort of grip on, on the finger. It just makes it sort of, once I release my dart, you know, I release that one first. So, I so it's like all in order. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously this one here just gets sort of, just at the back of the sort of stem sort of dart which is important that that little bit of grip's there for me. So you've the got the ring in the perfect place. Yeah. The grip placement with the knurl on the front is always the same. And we've got the sort of the small grip and then we've got some more deeper insertions here, you know, and that is where this finger comes in. You know, that finger is just there. And that's important to have them to sort of, these are all thin insertions, but this one, these are more thicker here. So you can, you can kind of almost feel the score before you throw yeah, it out as long as it's you're in so there. It's so important for anybody out there that, that wants to be good at darts to, to, to have the right dart. You know, and this sort of modelled shape for me, it feels the best. You know, I, I would Yeah, I, and, and, and you know, to me, I, I still, yeah. the, the length of the shaft use yeah. is incredible. Like, I mean, it, it's, it's one of them, it's one of them sort of darts where it's, it's very long. If, you, if you're a little bit off, you know, you can be very off. Because, you know what I mean, you're throwing large sort of targets and they're hard to control. If you're throwing smaller targets, it's easier to control. Yeah. So I think it's one of them things where if I'm on, I'm really on. And if I'm not, then I'm sort of quite off, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, this dart is just, been designed perfectly for the way I hold the dart. Obviously, usually we've got a nailed sort of point, but um, the insertions here really sort of, and the grip's perfect, and the release is just 
down, 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 so down the eye line. It, so it's, for you, does it feel a smooth release or do you feel a quick release? What's your I kind think, of? Yeah, I mean, it all depends on how I'm feeling. If I'm throwing well, it'd be a quick release, you know. Oh, so yeah. it actually does feel speed, speed up. up. I mean, yeah. a good example is against Gohan Price in the Premier League. I yeah, what a brilliant game that It was, was. a fantastic, yeah, fantastic game and a great game sort of um, yeah. a night for me. You know, I really enjoyed it. But I noticed myself. You had a chance. Yeah, I did. I missed yeah. the double 14, yeah. but I noticed myself quickening up. And I didn't want to slow down because I think I'm playing well quickly. So you enough. just carried on yeah, the so momentum. I thought, keep, keep, keep throwing quick like I wasn't. And it seemed to work because at the start it was a bit not so great, you know. But that, that thing, them things But it, it turned out to a right ding dong. It did, and it was a great game. And um, I mean, at 101 and a half average, you know what I mean? I, that's my highest First time in, yeah, in, so in the Premier League. And, 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 contenders, and yeah, contenders under pressure as well for, yeah. for the crowds. That must have given you again confidence to say, I well, mean, the three before me had all done well. So. In a way, there was a bit of pressure on my shoulders to, to not be the first one to really sort of home crowd. Yeah, as well. it was. It was. It's sort of um, as close as it would get to me. You know, it's not sort of on your doorstep. Yeah, but, but it's down just south. over an hour. You know, and it's quite close to me. So it was, and, and I had great support there. And I, 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 it was a great night, and I'll never forget it. So did so in a situation like that when the pressure is starting to rise, the adrenaline is rising. How do you keep yourself so calm? Because we saw that in the worlds, you you. You took out a lot of key moment darts, and you, again, you do it. You seem to do it all the time, so we know it's not luck. But you must be controlling those feelings. Whereas with the nickname Cool Land, Cool, <laughs> cool Land under pressure. Uh, yes, look, sometimes it goes your way. You know, I think a key to to my run in the World Championships was good finishing. Actually, I think I hit a lot of doubles with the last dart. And, it, and, it, and as a person standing behind you, someone oh, actually, you. Yes. really does yeah, you think you get you're gutted, two, aren't you? Yeah. I get a chance, and then they, yeah. you don't end up getting a chance, and it really bugs you. But I think that sort of might be if we look through the whole sort of progression of in the world, that could have been the key for for me to keep going through the rounds was the important last start doubles. Yeah, and so if we if we now look to the future for you, obviously everyone wants to improve, everyone wants to get better. Um, there's a there's a crop of talent around your age yeah, right in there now. It it's exciting times yeah. in the world of darts. There are youngsters coming through of thirteen and even that young, you know really pushing for these prizes. So what's your focus now to stay sharp and, and focus, make really, next 10 years to win yeah, a major title, I guess? I think, yeah, that's one of my goals to win a major title. But I think the key is to, to keep sort of um, practicing hard and, and not getting to, to rest on your laurels. You know, I think a lot of people can get a good, have a good talent um, and, and do good things, but rest on it, you know, and just think, well, I've probably made it now, so let's just sit down and not have to worry about practicing. I think that's totally the wrong attitude. I think the, the way to get better is to practice more. Um, and practice right, you know. I think it's important not to just go and play on a dartboard and Absolutely. just throw out a triple yeah. twenty. Yeah. Well, it, that's, I mean, it's been proven in every other yeah. sport apart from darts that structured practice yeah. is the way to go, and you have to do it properly. And that's something I've been sort of working on, actually, structured practice, um, as you'll know. You yeah, know, and, uh, and one of the things that's impressed me about you as well is you've taken a good look at your health and the life on tour. You've made some subtle changes, yeah. not not overly quick. No. And you started to look after yourself, yep. eat properly, uh, because it is tough on tour. You know how how do you handle that? Yeah, I mean the first year, you know, it was just an enjoyment. You know, you go out for nice meals and and you enjoy your time. But I think more now, it's more about um, sort of building that stamina. After yourself. Yeah, yeah, I mean, make it make. It, I think stamina is a key part. You know, I think sometimes you can feel yourself getting a bit fatigued as the week as the weekend goes on. You know, at pro tours. Um, so I think it's, it's it's very important and for me to look after. I've lost a bit of weight now, which I needed to. I've still got a long way to go, but that's an important part. But you're of doing it nice and steady. Yeah, it's no need. Yeah. There's no need, and it's hard to just do it very quickly when you're a professional dart player because you know what I mean. You're away in hotels. You don't really have the, the key ingredients to be able to eat healthily. But I'm I'm working on it and, and doing it as a, at a slow pace, like you say. Good. So if you had a billboard on the road um, to let to send a message, what would you put on that billboard? Oh, what, what are we talking about? What sort of message? Anything. Could be darts, could be life, could be anything. Um, dream, believe, achieve. Well, that's not, that's fantastic. Yeah. And what would you tell your 15-year-old self? Um, what would I tell my 15-year-old self? Um, probably that, not to get so worried when I was younger, that I was too desperate to make it to be a professional art player. Like, for me, I never thought this sort of day would come to be a professional art player. But it did, and um, yeah, I'd tell myself to sort of be more patient. Brilliant. And what item under £100 have you last bought that's the best thing you've ever bought? Um, probably clothes, maybe. I'm not a big spender. You know, I don't tend to spend a, a lot of money, really. I like to save it up and, and look after it and invest it in something good. You know, maybe a, 
a house or a mortgage in the, in the, in the next coming years. So not just a Rolex. Thing. Yeah, no, maybe one day. I mean, if I win the world this year, who knows? But yeah. uh, I think I'd sort of look look at getting a mortgage out and buying a house first. Yeah, good for you. Luke, thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you.